The Bristol Bay region is approximately 55,000 square miles in southwestern Alaska on the Bering Sea coast. It's a, perhaps the richest ecosystem in the whole state of Alaska and it is the heart and soul of the last greatest wild fishery in the world, the Bristol Bay Red Salmon Fishery. The commercial fishery must have started soon after the transfer from Russia to America, the five great salmon spawning rivers in Bristol Bay, the Ugashik, the Igigik, the Naknek, the Quijak, and the Nushigak. They all had canneries on them by the turn of the 20th century. My understanding of the commercial fishery is first it was on, sh on a ship and they processed and that was in the 1870s. When they started the land-based processing, they used traps at first and then by the late 1880s they were into the Columbia River salmon boat. So they made a version of it that was beefed up a bit for Bristol Bay's bigger winds and higher seas. So that was the, the double ender, the Bristol Bay double ender. Instead of 25, it's 30 feet. Fish traps were being regulated finally by the early 20th century, but they weren't fully outlawed in Bristol Bay, I believe, until about 1924. As traps became more regulated, the sailboat, the Bristol Bay Double Ender, the icon of the you know, fishery really, that was, became more commonly used and two people in the boat. And at the heyday of the Bristol Bay salmon industries, the sailboat days, 1930 to 1950, they would have maybe 1,200, maybe 1,500 sailboats would be operating at the mouths of the five rivers. For catching the fish, those Bristol Bay Double Enders would use a uh, drift net, and they actually had tents, and then uh, be out there for three or four days and come in. So it was a tough fishery, you know, it was really cold and wet all the time, and it was a demanding, physically demanding and pulling in the net, not, it's all hydraulics now, but in the old days, in the sailboat days, they pulled those nets in by themselves. The fishermen would deliver to cannery scows, or tenders they're known as, and they're just big barges, and in the early years, they were flat barges, just wooden barges, and they could, some of them could carry 45,000 sockeye on board and you can imagine the bottom ones were getting squished and then they would come into the cannery and offload them men pushing them with like big scoops and others with hoses washing them down into the elevator and then the elevator would take them up into the cannery into the fish house for processing Bristol Bay fishery attracted a huge number of people from all over the world, really Latin America, Europe, North, Northern Europe primarily, but also Italy and the Oriental people, Chinese, Japanese, Filipino, the Alaska Packers, they recruited a lot of Scandinavians from the Seattle area. The bigger uh, syndicate was the Alaska Packers Association based in San Francisco and they recruited a lot of Italian fishermen. Those men did the fishing and then the Chinese and the Japanese and the Filipino did all the hard labor. They built canneries, they also put the cans together, soldered them, they butchered the fish by, by hand, stuffed the salmon in the cans and soldered the top lid, then put them in the retorts. During the canning season, you had the maximum population in these places, probably in the order of three or four hundred, five hundred people in some of those big canneries, if not more. They overbuilt, and as time evolved in the 20th century, uh, transportation became more costly. 
the outlying canneries uh, were abandoned. When they left these canneries, they took the big machinery, but the carpenter shop, the blacksmith shop, you know, all the tools were left right, right there. Graveyard is relatively unusual because most of the canneries have either burned, they've eroded, or they've in some way been left to uh, go to seed, so to speak.